The ancient city of Chengdu, the provincial capital of Sichuan, is located in the western plain of the Sichuan Basin and has a history dating back around 3,000 years. Chengdu is known as a land of abundance with several local products, a pleasant climate, full of scenic spots, historical sites and traditional handicrafts and of course is known as the home of China's treasure, the giant panda. I lived in Sichuan province for about four years in total and throughout this video you'll be able to discover the best attractions this city has to offer visitors both from inside China and those visiting from overseas. This video will show you that Chengdu has much more to offer tourists than just being the home of the giant panda. And stay tuned until the end of the video when I will give you details of the world's biggest building located in the city. Hi, I am John and welcome to my channel Laowai in China. On this channel my aim is to inform people that have never visited China what life here is really like and not as it is often portrayed in Western media. I, I cover topics such as travel, culture as well as current affairs both here and overseas that reflect the day to day life here. Today's video is called All You Need to Know about the historical city of Chengdu, a guide to the home of the giant panda. I hope you like this video, so sit back and enjoy. Population and Ethnicity of Chengdu Chengdu has a population of around 12.21 million people and the vast majority of the city's population are Han Chinese, while elsewhere across the province there are several minorities including Tibetan, Chiang, Hui, Miao, Mongolian, Tijua and Manchu. Climate. You'll find the city has a pleasant climate, milder winters and summers making this a pleasant place whatever the season. Chengdu is sheltered by the Qingling Mountains to the north and the fierce cold from Siberia. The short winter here is much milder than that found in the region of the lower Yangtze, while summer temperatures are not as fierce as those found in nearby Cheng Chongqing. The average annual temperature is 16 degrees C with highs of around 35 C in the summer and 5 during the winter. Brief history of Chengdu. The first known human settlements here date back over 3,700 years and about 2,300 years ago the ninth king of the state of Shu moved his capital onto the site he named Chengdu. That name has remained the same since that time. Spicy Sichuan food. All of China knows that Sichuan is renowned for its spicy food and that is evident in the selection of dishes to be found across Chengdu. From the spicy hot pot to several mouth tingling dishes due to the introduction of Sichuan peppercorns. These peppercorns native to Sichuan gives a num numbing feeling to all the dishes they are added to. This is a great favourite for locals, although it does take some getting used to for those not accustomed to this. Whether eaten or not, Sichuan peppercorns and the spicy dishes of Chengdu are not to be missed during a visit here. Major Chengdu Attractions Wide and Narrow Alley Known in Chinese as Guangzai Shangzi, the Wide and Narrow Alley in addition to the Well Alley or Jing Shanxi are three parallel ancient city alleys that contain 45 courtyards among them. This is one of the city's historical and cultural treasures. The area dates back to the Qing Dynasty of 1644 to 1911 when it was chiefly used as an area to house soldiers. Over time the area was disused and began, sh began to show signs of neglect and decay. In 2003, renovation work began on the two alleys with the aim of creating a complex cultural and business street which also functioned as a tourist hub and recreation. The alleys located in Qingyang district of the city reopened in June 2008. They are to the east of Tongren Road and to the west of Changshan Street. The alleys today 
are a popular entertainment and nightlife venue in addition to being a tourist site. Here you will find lots of restaurants, pubs, tea houses and stores selling souvenirs. To visit here there are several bus services that operate to the area although the easiest route is Metro Line 4 to the wide and narrow Alley Station or Line 2 to the People's Park Station. From there take exit D1 and walk along Changshan Upper Road to the tourist site. Jinli Street Jinli Street has a history dating back almost as old as the city itself. The earliest mentions of the street from the Qing Dynasty of 221 to 206 BC. The street was famous for producing baldachin, a rich ornate cloth, during the Shu Kingdom of 221 to 263, when it was known as the first street of the Shu Kingdom. The street was restored and reopened to the public in October 2004. The street houses traditional style buildings inside the entrance of an imposing archway before stretching 350 metres with stores showing the culture of the Three Kingdoms period. Stores include tea houses and traditional crafts where visitors can browse at leisure at the shoe embroidery, lacquer products, local handicrafts and calligraphy. Outside the stores are several displays of artwork or watch a show on the stage that resembles an ancient pavilion. Performances here include Sichuan opera, folk music or performances that include quick changes of costume. Themed activities take place here on festival days and among the traditions are several modern attractions including coffee shops or the snack foods that Sichuan is famous for. Wuhu Temple Wuhu Temple or Wuhu Shrine Temple of, of Marquis, to give its full title, is dedicated to Zuge Liang, the Marquis Wu of the Kingdom of Shu during the Three Kingdoms period of 220 to 280. Zuge Liang was a politician, militarist, astronomer and diplomat. The temple is located in the southwestern area of the city. It is unclear exactly when it was built only that it stands next to the temple of Liu, Liu Bei. The current temple dates from 1672. The major attractions during a visit here include the main temple, the front gate, the second gate, the temple of Liu Bei, the temple of Zuge Liang, the San Yi temple and the tomb of Liu Bei. The easiest way to visit here, the temple is by taking Metro Line 3 to, to Gao Sheng Chiao Station then walking for three to five minutes eastward along Wuhushi Avenue to the temple entrance. The Thatched Cottage of Du Fu The home of the famous poet Du Fu, who lived during the Tang Dynasty of 618 to 907, is located about five kilometers west of Tianfu Square in the center of Chengdu. Du Fu was born in Henan Province in the year 712. He lived in Chang'an, now the city now the city of Xi'an until he was forced to flee due to the Anxi Rebellion of 758, arriving in Chengdu the following year. The thatch cottage on the outskirts of the city was built for him by friends in 760. During his four years in the cottage, he composed more than 240 poems that are today recognized as precious national treasures. After he left Chengdu, the cottage was abandoned and it was not until hundreds of years later, during the Northern Song Dynasty of 960 to 1127, that a new structure was built to commemorate the important contribution Du Fu made to Chinese literature. From that time, the, the thatched cottage has seen several renovations and enlargements, and today the cottage is seen as a shrine to Chinese literature in the form of a commemorative museum and traditional garden. The total area of the cottage and garden covers around 59 acres and includes the Fan An Temple and the Plum Garden with most of the present building dating from the Qing Dynasty. To visit here simply take Metro Line 4 to, to North Cao Tang Road Station and walk south for about 15 minutes to reach the entrance. Qing Yan Palace Qing Yan Palace or Qing Yan Gong is one of China's most famous Taoist temples located in the northwest area of Chengdu. 
The building was originally constructed in the Tang Dynasty of 618 to 907 at a time when the religion was flourishing in this part of China. Most of the temple that st stands today date from the Qing Dynasty of 1644 to 1911, including the attractions of San Cheng Hall, Han Yuan Palace, Wuji Palace, and the magnificent Eight Trigrams Pavilion built on square foundations. The octagonal shaped building reflects the ancient Chinese philosophy that the sky is round and the earth square. The easiest way to visit this attraction is by using Metro Line 5 to Qingying Palace Station and using exits C or D. The entrance fee is just 10 RMB and it is open daily from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Wenshu Monastery. Located on Wenshu Yuan Street in the center of Chengdu, Wenshu Monastery is the best preserved Buddhist, Buddhist temple in the city. The monastery is the home of the B Buddhist Association of Sichuan Province, as well as for the city of Chengdu. Wenshu Mon Monastery was originally called Xinxiang Temple and was first built during the Tang Dynasty of 618 to 907, during the reign of the Qing Dynasty's Emperor Kangxi. Sidu, an accomplished B Buddhist monk, came to the temple, built a simple wooden hut, and leave, lived an ascetic life for several years. There are several cultural relics from the Song and Tang dynasties stored here, including examples of handwriting, paintings, and other historic artwork. There are also more than 300 Buddha statues of iron, bronze, wood, and jade. During a visit here, visitors can enjoy the gardens, enjoy tea, while listening to traditional folk music. The easiest way to visit the monastery is to take Metro Line 1 to the Wenshu Yuan or Wenshu Monastery Station. Entry is free and this attraction is open daily from 8.30 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. Jinsha Site Museum Jinsha Site Museum covers an area of 38,000 square meters and consists of a relics hall, exhibition hall, cultural heritage protection center and ecological garden. It is a rare museum in China for it combines the modern civilization with that of the ancient Shu state. The area that Sichuan covers today was governed by the Shu state in ancient times. In addition to aspects of ecological, environmental and culture. The museum was constructed to help protect, study and display the finds from the Jinsha site. This archaeological site was only discovered by archaeologists in February of 2001 and now covers an area of around 5 square kilometers. The historical finds date back around 3,000 years to the late Shang dynasty of the 17th to 11th centuries BC through to the early spring and autumn period of 7, 770 to 476 BC. It is only the second ancient city of the Shu state to have been discovered. To date, the, de the finds include 63 sacrificial spots, over 6,000 relics, more than 70 sites of former buildings, and three cemeteries. The finds include the most ivory, the most jade, and the most gold to have been discovered in a single archaeological site, in addition to a large number of lifelike stone statues. For those wanting to visit this attraction, take Metro Line 7 to the Jinsha Site Museum Station and take Exit C. The cost of entry is 80 RMB and free for children under 1.3 meters in height, as well as for seniors aged over 70. Sichuan Museum You will find Sichuan Museum located in the west of Chengdu, adjacent to Huanhua Stream Park. The museum is the largest comprehensive museum in the southwest of China and hosts a range of Sichuan's historical collections across its 14 exhibition halls. The collections on display include 260,000 items which ranks the museum as the sixth most important public museum in all of China. The relics are categorized into ceramics, stone sculptures, bronze, pottery, ancient coins, calligraphy, and paintings, folk art and crafts, and modern art and craft, modern works of art. 
The closest metro station to the museum is the Chengdu University of TCM and Provincial People's Hospital Station on lines 2 and 4. Take exit A. It is then a walk of around one kilometre southwest to the museum entrance. There is free entry to the museum, but you must have your ID or passport with you and a maximum of 4,000 visitors per day are admitted. The museum is closed on Mondays, opens at 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. on Saturdays. All other days, it is open from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Chunxi Road Chunxi Road Pedestrian Street, located in Jinjiang District, is a place not to be missed. It covers an area of 200,000 square meters and is one of Chengdu's main shopping centers. Originally built in 1924 to connect two commercial centres, the East Street and Mercantile Corporation. After a century of evolution, it stretches across several streets and is now the city's city centre of fashion as well as a great place for meeting up in hundreds of restaurants, bars and entertainment venues. There are more than 700 stores from international high-end brands to cheap places where you can try out your skills at bargaining. Aside from shopping, the snacks available here are mouth-watering, including lots of local spicy options to the familiar Western fast food outlets and coffee shops. There are num- numerous bus routes that operate here, or you can take Metro Lines 2 or 3 to the Ch- Chunxi Road Station and use exits C or D. Most businesses here are open every day from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. Tianfu Square Tianfu Square has rega- is regarded as a symbol of Chengdu and is located in the heart of the city. It is the largest city square in southwest China, covering an area of nearly 90,000 square meters and is surrounded by modern skyscrapers. Tianfu Square is surrounded by the commercial and business district. Metro lines 1 and 2 meet here and the square is a popular gathering place for tourists and locals. The square is paved with granite, which is lined with trees and flowers, making this a popular place for leisure activities or just resting and watching the world go by. In the summer evenings, there is a musical show featuring water fountains decorated by colourful neon lights. In addition to the shopping malls that lead down to the nearby Chunxi Road, the square is surrounded by other attractions, including the Sichuan Science and Technology Museum, with its huge statue of Chairman Mao in front. To the northwest of the square is the Sichuan Art Gallery, with the Chengdu Museum a short distance to the west. Another attraction on the western end of the square is the Imperial Mosque, that dates back to the 16th century. It is the largest mosque to be found in the province and hosts several Islamic scriptures. The Jincheng Art Mute Palace is across from the eastern end of Tianfu Square and is a popular venue for performances from all over the world. A 10-minute walk west from Tianfu Square will take you to People's Park, the most historical park in the city. For visitors wanting to visit Tianfu Square, you can take numerous bus services there or Metro Lines 1 and 2. Tianfu Square Station is tastefully constructed below the street level of the eastern, of the sunken eastern end of the square. Entry to the square is free and it is always open. Chengdu Happy Valley Happy Valley Chengdu is a large modern theme park with more than 130 rides and attractions across the 470,000 square meters located in Jinyue District around 7 kilometers to the northwest of Tianfu Square. The theme park is set across seven areas that include roller coasters, theatre shows, acrobatics and extreme sports. Inside the theme park you can save walking time by taking the electric tour bus which can be used to hop on and off as many times as you like for just 30 RMB per person. To visit here take Metro Line 6 to Shihua Avenue Station and use Exit D. The entry ticket is 230 RMB. For children between 1.2 to 1.5 meters, the cost is 120 RMB. And night tickets are available for 100 RMB for entry after 5 p.m. The theme park is open daily from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m.
Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding. I've already covered this base in more detail in another video and will provide the link in the description below. For a brief summary, the Chengdu Panda Base is located 10 kilometers from city center and is a world leader in breeding and conservation of this creature. The future of the giant panda was at one time seriously under threat of extinction, but the work conducted by this and other centers has seen that the future for the panda improved somewhat. Through extensive research and training, giant pandas are now being gradually released into the wild in a few remote forested, forested areas deemed suitable and safe locations. The easiest way to visit here is to take one of bus numbers 87, 198, 198A or 655 to the Xiongmao Jidi Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding stop. Entry is 58 RMB and the best time to visit is from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m. during the panda's breakfast time, when they are at their most active. New Century Global Center As promised earlier, I could not complete this video without a mention of the world's biggest building by floor space. The impressive New Century Global Center is about twice the size of the previous holder of the title of the world's biggest shopping mall. This mall is designed to have the attributes of a small town and is located in the Wuhu district of the city. It is 99 meters or 18 floors in height and covers an area of 1.5 million square meters in area. Building began in 2013 and although the building is now officially open, many businesses are not yet fully operational, but give it time and these will soon be functioning. Although primarily a shopping mall, it is also a water park, an IMAX theater, and two hotels with more than 1,000 hotel rooms available. The Paradise Island Water Park contains an indoor beach that measures more than one kilometer in length, and its giant LRD screen measures 150 meters by 40 meters to provide indoor scenery. In the evenings, the indoor sea can be covered over for another purpose when the area can be used for musical performances by, ta top, by top acts from China and overseas. The only word I can think of to describe this structure is colossal. Transportation within Chengdu As the largest transportation hub within the province of Sichuan, as well as in the southwest of China, Chengdu has an abundance of transportation options, with two airports bringing visitors both domestically and internationally into the city, and rail links across all of China into its three main railway stations, there is no difficulty in getting here. There are also 13 bus stations located across the city that are used by express bus services from within the province and further afield. Chengdu Metro currently has 12 lines in operation and covers 519 kilometers at a cost of just 2 RMB for journeys up to 4, uh, four kilometers, with the longest journeys costing up to 9 RMB. There are further 10 lines either under construction or planned for future expansion. There are more than 750 bus routes covering all areas of the city with low fares starting from just 1 RMB as well as the regular bus services that are also fast buses known as BRT, sightseeing buses and 24 night bus routes. Taxis are a little complicated in Chengdu with different companies charging different rates depending upon the size of car. Some do not charge by the taxi meter and a fee must be neg negotiated before beginning the journey. There are also numerous dockless sharing bikes available you just have to scan the QR code, complete the ID verification, and once completed, you are ready to go. Pedicabs, especially in the city centre, are another mode of transport and usually cost from 5 RMB. You should be prepared to negotiate a fee though, as the drivers like to overcharge for their effort in getting you to your destination quickly. That is all for this video. If you enjoyed watching it and it has shown you a little detail of life here in China, then your subscribing to my channel would mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click on the link to the next video. And until the next time, goodbye for now.